Welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's course preview on pricing strategies and analysis techniques. Pricing is one of the tactics. It's an important marketing tool in retailing and has become much more analytically and strategically focused than in the past. Prices vary based on different promotions and on differing retailer strategies. A difference of 5 or 10 percent in price can influence sales and profit significantly. Pricing decisions directly affect category sales, inventory positions, and category profitability. Here are the learning objectives for this pricing course. It's always important to start by understanding different strategies associated with price and then learn some of the important analytics and insights that can be derived when analyzing price. We will only cover a few of the objectives in this course preview. Let's get started. Price is the amount of money or its equivalent for anything that is bought, sold, or offered for sale. This tactic plays a huge role in how much volume is sold in a category. It's a critical source of influence over shopper purchase behavior. Pricing is one of the four P's of the marketing mix, product, place or distribution, price and promotion. Prices vary based on different promotions and on differing retailer strategies. A difference of 5 or 10 percent in price can influence sales and profit significantly. Pricing decisions directly affect category sales, inventory positions, and category profitability. It is fundamentally different than the other three elements of the marketing mix because product, distribution, and promotion create value while pricing extracts value. In this course, we're going to cover three areas that relate to pricing principles, including pricing strategies and guidelines, setting new item pricing, and setting promotional pricing. Each of these components of pricing are important to understand and will give you a great understanding of retail pricing and analytics. We'll start with pricing strategies and guidelines. There are many factors that influence the retail pricing strategy of a company. Some of the most important factors include company profit and market share objectives, manufacturing costs, price elasticity, competitive pricing, product value, and legal constraints. We need to understand each of these factors and what is their impact on the pricing strategy. Companies have historically used one of three approaches to develop their pricing strategy. Cost-based, consumer-based, or competition-based. In order to develop an effective pricing strategy, companies need to take into account and analyze simultaneously the consumer, cost, and competition. Also, companies need to encompass some other elements in their pricing strategy, including the retailer's pricing strategy in each market channel, the pricing strategies tied in with different category role and strategy assignments for each retailer, the retailer's strategic objectives, targets, and goals, including price thresholds and guardrails, and their marketing mix. Consideration for each of these elements will lead to a robust omni-channel retailing pricing strategy. There are many different pricing strategies that retailers may choose from. Here are some of the more common ones. We will review in detail on some of the more common retail pricing strategies in the following slides. High-low pricing is a strategy that's most common in grocery stores and supermarkets. This pricing strategy focuses on temporary price reductions as a means to advertise products and draw traffic to the store. Let's review some of the pros and cons of high-low pricing. High-low pricing can drive both in-store excitement and traffic, with shoppers coming to the store specifically to purchase the temporary priced products. It can also influence the retailer's overall price image. 
High-low pricing also has some cons. TPRs can establish price point expectations for consumers so that they won't purchase the product at regular price. They can also cause shoppers to pantry load, which is where consumers purchase large quantities that keep them away from purchasing the product again for a longer period of time. TPRs can also encourage cherry picking, which is where shoppers only purchase specially priced items at the retailer. And finally, high-low pricing makes forecasting much more difficult for both retailers and vendors because of the variances in incremental sales when on TPR. These volume surges can also lead to out-of-stocks for the retailer. EDLP is where retail prices remain consistently low over a long period of time. Walmart is the most well-known example of an EDLP retailer. Everyday low price builds an ongoing trust between the shopper and the retailer because they can rely on good prices every time they shop in the store. It also makes the shopping process easier for the customer. There are also benefits for the retailer and vendor in an EDLP environment as there are efficiencies in internal processes like forecasting and transportation costs. EDLP is only possible with retailers who can sustain a low cost structure through internal efficiencies long term. Vendor suggested retail price is another retail pricing strategy. It's the amount of money for which the vendor of a product recommends that it be sold for in stores. It's a common strategy used by smaller retail stores to maintain a decent profit while avoiding price wars. There are some potential issues when retailers rely on MSRPs in their pricing strategies. It does not necessarily correspond to the price that competitive retailers actually use, or even more importantly, the price shoppers are willing to pay. By pricing products with the suggested retail prices supplied by the vendor, the retailer has no influence or decision-making related to pricing. Using these suggested prices also takes away the competitive advantage that a retailer may have by pricing the product lower or higher. Psychological pricing is another pricing strategy that retailers may use. This strategy is used to make shoppers feel like they're getting a fair deal. Retailers can have price stickers in colors like red or yellow with large price signs with save messages and many other measures to communicate lower prices to shoppers. Another common method is end figure pricing where the last digit is something other than a zero. Fractional prices suggested to shoppers that goods are marked at the lowest price possible. In this example, the price of the product ends in an 8. Another example of psychological pricing is when the cents are printed smaller. Even though the cents are seen and not totally ignored, they may subconsciously be partially ignored. In this example, the 88 cents are smaller than the $1 figure. Pricing is both an art and a science. Here's a great model introduced by Kahneman and Tversky in 1979 called the Prospect Value Theory. It identifies the following consumer behaviors in relation to pricing that's still very relevant today. In net, consumers perceive price differences in proportional terms rather than absolute value and they interpret losses more negatively than gains. For example, one additional dollar saved gives less increase in satisfaction or value than the dissatisfaction caused by a one dollar that they have to pay. Finally, consumers evaluate prices relative to a reference point, as shown on the graph, at the intersection of the x and y axis, which is called the status quo. Let's look at an example from the survey that was run as part of their study. If consumers wanted to buy a $15 calculator, 68% of respondents were willing to drive to another store to save only $5. But if the calculator costs $125, 
only 29% of respondents were willing to drive to another store to save the same $5. The relative savings, although the same, was not seen as the same value. In competition-oriented pricing, the retailer needs to look at how their main competition is pricing their products and then set their prices accordingly. There are several things that retailers need to consider when developing a competitive pricing strategy, including pricing zones, pricing rules, and key value items. Let's review each of these in more detail. In order to remain competitive on price, retailers may define different pricing zones across a region, where stores are grouped together that have a common set of pricing rules. For example, stores within a certain region that are within close proximity of a certain competitor may be in a price zone group. Lower income stores that are in close proximity to a hard discount retailer may require lower prices than other zones. Price zoning gives the ability to maximize profitability while remaining competitive within the marketplace. Determining an optimal price strategy through zone configuration requires a deep understanding of many factors, like banner, geography, shopper, and or proximity to competition. For commodity categories like milk, butter, and eggs, retailers may price by store instead of by zone to ensure competitiveness on these key categories. Some retailers' strategy is to follow a one-price policy, where regardless of store location, they charge all of their customers the same price for an item. Retailers can create pricing rules relative to competition that may be applied to specific items for a retailer, sometimes within each of the pricing zones that they've defined. An item may be priced within a certain percentage of competition or within a certain number of dollars and centers of competition, or the rule may focus on ensuring the lowest price among a certain set of competitors. We've now given you a preview of our certified course on pricing strategies and analysis techniques. This course will help you improve the recommendations and decisions that you make in this important tactic. There are many options for you to choose from if you're interested in purchasing this course. The online course is available for purchase through Our House, which is Category Management Knowledge Group's state-of-the-art online training center. If you'd prefer, we can also run a private webinar for up to 200 people for a cost of $3,000, or a live session at a national or team meeting. Or, if you're from a larger organization where many people would want to access the course, we can also make the course available for your use within your own internal learning management system. Your choices are limitless. Return on investment of your data purchase is paramount. For the millions of dollars some organizations spend on data, you want to know that the data is being optimized and maximized. Purchasing data gives your organization facts and data, but you shouldn't allocate your whole budget to data. By adding in software and reporting tools, you're providing them with information. Usually, this requires additional budget dollars to pay for the software and tools. For many organizations, the data and software comes with training and unfortunately many believe that training is enough to develop skills to properly use data, but it's not. You need to provide applicational training that will help your organization move from data to insights and teach them how to then turn those insights into action. Not only category management needs to have these skills, Sales, marketing, space management, and other departments require these analytic skills to make more strategic and fact-based decisions in their roles. And to move to breakthrough insights, the right analysis at a much deeper level needs to be done. This is where the specialists do their work, where category management and shopper marketing can complete the in-depth analysis to find those breakthroughs. 
You need to set aside part of your data budget to pay for the corresponding applicational training to increase capability on your team and in your organization ongoing. This will help you increase data return on investment and more importantly move your organization to a more strategic and fact-based approach. At Category Management Knowledge Group, we can work with you to create solutions that will help you move your organization to a more strategic, fact-based place with increased return on investment for your data purchased. So where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing the certified course or working with us to help you determine multifunctional training opportunities for your organization, that will ultimately lead to increased return on your data investment, please contact us. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day.